Multiple! This is the story of the greatest imports of an era. A player who made every team he was on an instant contender. And also a fan favorite. Today we ask the question, how good was Huni really? It's crazy to imagine that Huni's career began as a practice partner. He worked with the Samsung organization as an unofficial substitute, helping the team prepare for their on-stage matches. It wasn't until 2015 that he got his first real shot and exploded onto the scene in a way no one thought possible. On this champion form, I think he's gonna go for it again now. He has the tee already. That could be his next oh, pickup. And now he catches game. two! The shot catches them both! Power of Evil's down! Fnatic look for Hilly's off the back of incredible carry performances from Hootie on champions like well, the Sandra, there's a flash, there's a stun, three members of elements on and his signature rumble. Nearby, it looks like a dive is about to come out. Freddy is trying to bait it. Rain of a flash is in. Dominus comes out. Spence Fear and Cataclysm, where is it? He's going to get it down under the tower, but Freddy is going to get dropped. Equalizer comes out from Hooney once again. Not the greatest. And Rage stuns Hooney up under the, the tower, kill. but he gets himself too. Rain over re engages with the rest of Fnatic behind him. That's a triple kill. The honey pot is delicious. And Fnatic. The team rocketed to a 13-5 record during the spring split. It was clear that they had moved on to something and someone special. For the spring split, Huni led all top laners in both kill participation at 73% and damage percentage at almost 27%. There was no question that Huni was the best top laner in the league already and had the potential to shake the very way the region views top laners in general. Off the back of their impressive regular season, the team faced off against H2K in the semifinals. It was another coming out party for the top lane sensation and the rest of the revamped Fnatic squad. All that was left in their way was the unicorns of love in the finals. Five games of warfare on the summoner's rift. An entertaining series full of back and forths. But the new kids on the block that donned the familiar black and orange prevailed in the end. Rather unexpectedly, considering the major roster reconstruction, Fnatic was back on top of the EU LCS. And it was in large part thanks to their fun loving monster of a carry in the top lane. The question now became. Was Huni just a big fish in a small pond, or could he hang with the big boys on the international stage? So came MSI 2015, the first of its kind. A mid-season tournament inviting the number one team from every region to battle it out on the rift. From NA, TSM. From China, EDG. And from Korea, SK Telecom T1. Despite their impressive domestic win, Fnatic was considered quite the underdog in most of their matchups, but thanks to some unique champion picks, those pre-tournament expectations changed rather quickly. Have early game presence on Gragas, and they might be looking to take some power on oh, Dyrus. baby, right onto Dyrus, that's first blood, and Fnatic are on the board. And the team ended the group stage with a 2-3 and three record, just barely squeaking into the playoffs. And their reward for making it this far was getting slaughtered by the team every other team had feared up to that point, SKT. Or so we all thought. Oh, it's visiting Huni. You talked about SKT playing around Huni and now they are doing it. Equalizer is down. It's Korean on Korean battle and it's Huni that wins. Huni takes down Faker in a 2v1 and Fabian wants more. Historically, Korea had always honed the elite carry top lands, but for once, the West had a carry top laner that could contend with the best. Huni made big play after big play, warding off ganks and impressing in team fights. Although the final game of the series was rather anticlimactic, the team and Huni's performance on their first international stage left many excited for what was to come. And what was to come was the most dominant run by a team in any domestic league up until that point. The perfect 18-0 Fnatic. The addition of Reckless helped stabilize any previous weaknesses the squad had. What can be said? 
they were simply unbeatable. Here they turn their attention to Limited is going to be the one. Young Buck as well soon to follow. That's going to interrupt the net. Reckless is looking for the kill as Rolls gets headbutted towards the wall. The Mother Vanda is not going to be able to save Mr. Rolls' life. This is the engage. Hooney's looking for more. He gets caught underneath the laser. Rocket get a kill, but they will lose their nexus. Fnatic remain undefeated. In the finals, Fnatic faced off against the remnants of the legendary past in Expeke and Origin. And Huni faced off against the man he replaced, the legendary Soas. This was not smooth sailing for the rookie sensation. Huni struggled at many points during the series, overextending and dying in lane, or getting killed in teamfights. But his playmaking on three different carry top laners, including Fizz, was undeniable. It was clear he was a high risk, high reward type of player. It came with the territory of having him on your team. And after a grueling final game, Fnatic were the ones that marched towards the Nexus. As the number one seed! Worlds 2015. This wasn't any Worlds for a Western organization. Fnatic was, dare we say, a dark horse contender for the title. They had taken SKT to five games during the previous international tournament and followed that up by upgrading their roster, going 18-0 and winning the EU LCS. Who was going to stop this team? It surely wasn't going to be EDG. The MSI champions matched up against Fnatic in the first round of the playoff stage, and quite frankly, the European hope embarrassed them. The EU LCS champions took a 3-0 victory, sending them into a collision course with another Korean powerhouse and pre-tournament contender, the Ku Tigers. Now, this was a particularly interesting and difficult matchup for Fnatic. Not only was this one of the best teams from Korea, which automatically made them the likely favorite, but they also had this guy in the top lane named Smeb, who was only arguably the best top laner in the world. If Fnatic were going to make this a series and really have a chance of winning it all, it would be up to Huni to stand up to the actual best in the world. And put simply, we found out, he just wasn't on that level. Alright, Huni gonna pick a fight once more with Smith. And Grand Challenge throws down. Smith flashes away from the third rock of the Broken Wings. Huni will find the ah! but fails the flash! Smith took Huni to task. Although there were glimmers of hope in the first game, game two and three was a complete annihilation. The Ku Tigers looking to upset the hometown heroes. Ku will get themselves the ace, will get themselves the base and will earn themselves a shot at the Summoner's Cup in Berlin against SK Telecom. The hopes of the West came to a crashing 3-0 end. The year was still a huge success despite the unfortunate ending. The following year for Fnatic was an opportunity to build on those successes, but they never got the opportunity. Huni and his partner in crime, Rainover, leave to join North America's Immortals. The question was could the duo and could Huni dominate outside of the Fnatic environment? And while those questions were answered rather quickly. Out, but not even Jin can kill Immortals. It's gonna be the game right now. Only Rush and High left alive. Here he was at the top of the league in practically every significant category, sporting a 5.1 KDA leading all tops with 6 solo kills, a 27% damage percentage, and to top it all off, not one, but two pentakills. And a pentakill for Huni! The ball, is it gonna be the penta? Huni in the final game of their spring split gets a pentakill! Immortals dominated the LCS like no team had since the OG Cloud9 roster, and it was in large part thanks to Huni completely demolishing every top laner in his path. But despite their impressive regular season finish, their playoff performance left a lot to be desired. Immortals faced off against the lower-seeded TSM in the semifinals. 
Team Solomid had struggled mightily all throughout the regular season, trying to work around the various superstar caliber players on the team. In the playoffs, they were riding a high off their last series, but against Immortals, they were the overwhelming underdogs. However, the action on the Rift would have had you believing otherwise. TSM were the ones throttling the favored Immortals. And it was Huni again getting exposed. His champion pool issues or stubbornness was Immortals undoing as he failed to prioritize key tank champions in the meta, instead opting for subpar carry champions. He was easily outperformed by his counterpart on the opposing team in Hanser, and left a sour taste in the mounts of many. Perhaps Huni was a more flawed player than we previously realized. Their shortcomings in the spring didn't impact analysts' expectations for summer though. Keeping the same roster together, they finished the regular season with a 16-2 record in best of three series and went into the playoffs as the second best team in the league, only behind TSM. They found themselves in the semifinals with an opportunity to rewrite the previous split's failures, but again, they fell to Cloud9 in a back and forth five game series. Once again, they found themselves fighting in the third place match rather than the finals where many believed they belonged. At this point, Huni's stock as a player had dropped significantly. He was no longer uncontestable in North America, and his flaws were just as evident as his strengths. He had regressed. So one could imagine how surprising it was when SKT decided to sign Huni as their top laner for the 2017 season. Although fans grimaced at the idea of assigning a player that was struggling to succeed in the least competitive major region, the SKT system was undeniable. The past two years, the team sported two different top laners in Marin and Duke, and both went on to win the World Championship. Perhaps they could win with anybody. For the first half of the season, it seemed that way. The team went 16-2 in the regular season, and thrashed KT 3-0 in the LCK Finals. At MSI, they were just as dominant as ever taking down Flashwolves 3-0 in the semifinal, and then 3 one in G2 in the Grand Finals. Once again the champions. At the tournament, he led all top laners in CS per minute, damage per minute, and gold difference at 50. SKT had seemingly camouflaged any problems Huni had and allowed him to flourish into one of the best top laners in the world once again. But his breakthrough of sorts was short-lived. He spent large portions of the split sitting on the bench to account for his poor performances. In the split finals, Huni only managed to play two games of the four, where SKT eventually fell to launch you. Still, Worlds is what mattered most. The team finished first in their group despite some shaky matches, but the real problem started to surface in the quarterfinals. SKT faced off against Europe's Misfits, and it was far more competitive than anyone could have imagined, knowing the history of these two teams. The legendary SKT was pushed to the brink in five games and just barely squeaked by. Things only got worse in the semifinals. RNG and Uzi even managed to take a 2-1 lead in the series, leaving the SKT players in shambles. They bounced back to take the series against all odds, but clearly, this team was far more flawed than the SKT of previous years, and it was only a matter of time until someone could punish them. The SKT dynasty is over! All hail the new kings! Samsung Galaxy, your 2017 world champions! Finally, SKT was dethroned at Worlds the first series that they had ever lost at a world championship, and to lose 3-0 in the finals at that. It was devastating. For Huni, you could argue he was actually the second best player on the team throughout the tournament after Faker, which was a certainly a step up from his domestic performance. But in the end, he failed to make much of an impact in the final series when it mattered most.
Huni was back in North America the following year, still remaining a relatively hot commodity despite some of his struggles the previous year. He joined Echo Fox and formed another strong top jungle duo alongside the notorious Dardock. And perhaps Huni's greatest achievement was becoming one of Dardock's most trusted teammates. I think by the time we, we make it to playoffs, Huni will be in even better form. But for right now, yeah, he is smurfing. <laughs> Echo Fox went from a consistent bottom dweller in the LCS to finishing second in the regular season and losing a competitive series in the playoffs. Clearly, Huni still had the X-Factor ability to lift a losing team to new heights. But his impact was becoming shorter and shorter lived. By summer, the team had regressed and were eliminated by TSM twice, both in the playoffs and in the regional qualifiers. Huni swapped teams again, moving to Clutch Gaming. At this point, Huni was a shell of the dominant top laner he once was, but he was still a key player in getting the team to Worlds. It's what followed that made the end of Huni's career infamous. He signed a two-year, reportedly $2.3 million contract with the team, which now rebranded to Dignitas, making him one of the highest paid players in the history of the LCS and probably most of League's history up to that point. And he really, really didn't live up to that contract. Next year it was EG, and finally TSM. His last stint on a semi-competitive team, Huni was a middle-of-the-pack top laner at best. Later into the 2021 season, Huni finally announced his retirement from professional League of Legends. For many who had watched the last few years of Huni's career, this was a long time coming. His legacy with Fnatic, Immortals, and SKT was becoming marred by riding it out for too long on these mediocre NA teams as he chased the bag. It, but it seemed to not bother Huni one bit. If you think about it, nothing really did. Huni came into the league world as a fun-loving guy that played and lived to the beat of his own drum. You are the best starting player. For me? This split, yes. You understand? MV. But this one is champion series. Dude, this is, this is no. the L. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the S. He helped hoist trophies in Europe, Korea, and on the international stage. He had his flaws as a player, no question. And we saw his ceiling. He was never the best top lane in the world and he was only the best in the West for a short period of time. But when you look at his whole career, his impact on the game can never be understated. He gave European fans hope with Fnatic. He built a foundation of new fans at Immortals and won an MSI and made it all the way to the World Finals on SKT. Huni was a great player and great entertainer. And any League fan that followed Huni's career will tell you we miss him.